Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. A federal high court in Port Harcourt has given a judgment restraining the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, from presenting Tonya Cole and Senator Magnus Abbey as governorship candidates in the general elections. Joining us this morning to speak on the judgment and next steps is one of the affected candidates, Tonya Cole. Welcome to The Morning Show. Yes, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm not sure that maybe you might like to clarify how you are at this point, that this judgment has come down from the federal high court and that inter-party division has cost yourself and Senator Abe, as well as all other APC candidates at all levels, the opportunity to be fielded as candidates in the upcoming elections as things stand now. Now, can you tell us the next steps? Will you attempt to reconcile all the factions okay. of APC before filing an appeal, which we presume that you will be, or will you go ahead and file an appeal as a divided house? Okay, so clarification first. Um, the court judgment, uh, with, like with all legal processes, gives you the opportunity to continue to pursue a course of action until it's completed. So even though there's a judgment, uh, as far as INEC and uh, the APC uh, National are concerned, they have fielded a candidate, their process went through, their process was an accepted process, and that is where we are. Now to the second question on reconciliation, we have be always been open to reconciliation. So as far as I'm concerned, I have always been. I've reached out to all parties, uh, inviting them to come and sit down and have reconciliation. So we'll continue doing that. That has never closed. That door remains open. Well, Senator Magnus Abe was on the show uh, sometime uh, last week. And he absorbed himself of any blames in all of this um, in Broglie, we are seeing in River State, in, in your party. He says you and your faction started all of this issue by first um, disenfranchising members, about 16,000 of them, from participating in the Congress. And you went ahead to disobey a court order restraining you from carrying out that Congress. How do you respond to this? No, I don't agree with that. I know that there were disagreements, like with all things, there would always be disagreements. But I also believe that wherever there are disagreements, all it takes is for two people to sit down across the table and come to an agreement. Opportunities, various opportunities were given for that to, be hap uh, to happen. But uh, I guess that was never taken, which is where we are today. Uh, regarding the disenfranchisement and the court orders, we have always obeyed court orders. The Congress that was challenged was canceled. The N uh, NWC of EPC uh, sent in, canceled that Congress. Another one was set up, which was done. And all the disenfranchised uh, parties were allowed and given the opportunity to also come just using their tellers to show that they had paid to come in. Now, they chose themselves not to participate in that uh, election. So it's a, at the end of the day, it's a matter of choice. And the courts will eventually see that APC uh, National and the Ojukai-led APC, which is the legitimate one, obeyed totally and completely all the uh, instances of law. All right. Um Mr. Tony Cole, I would like to say, I would like to find out from you. All this, yeah, it doesn't it boil down to distraction, because for the APC you wanted to take on the behemoths of the incumbents, and right now having to deal with court cases, infightings within the party. At the end of the day, are you not losing time? Are you not losing ground? Are you not wasting resources to that which, that should be used to actually fight? and probably get a headway in this particular struggle for the power in River State. So I would agree with you on one part, that uh, there is a distraction. But I'm also someone who has always been focused on what I do. And so all the while, I have focused very, very, very candidly on campaigning grass, uh, at the grassroots. We have gone to over 230 wards, ward by ward, meeting the community and focusing on the problems of the communities. And we have seen that at the, de at the different wards. So I have never been distracted by any of this. We have focused on it and we're very, very ready for the elections because we know that River State needs a lot of help. Look, for goodness sake, there are 2.7 million, 2.7 million unemployed youths 
in River State, 2.7 million. That's a lot of young people sitting down, having no work, and idle. And that is potential for disaster. Um, Mr. Cole, you are not only facing legal tussle yes. by a party, fellow party member, Senator Magnus Abbey, we are also seeing you facing legal tussle by the opposition, People's Democratic Party, the ruling party in the state, which got a judgment in their favor, nullifying uh, the APC candidates in, in the forthcoming election. Yes, and so in that case, first of all, we all know that one party cannot interfere in the affairs of another party. There's a Supreme Court judgment that already sets that precedent. You cannot leave your party and come and fight an internal party in another, an internal matter in another party. And so that will be appealed, and I'm sure that the court is going to see that straight away. You can't do that. And so I'm not worried about what the PDP is doing, because I think it's illegal and it's crossing into a territory that they should not be. This is an internal party affair, and we will resolve it internally. Uh, and that's, what, that's where we are. So that will be appealed, and I'm sure that that will be overturned in appeal. Let's look at what actually informed your move into politics. Can you tell us what your agenda is for River State, seeing as you have quite a strong incumbent governor that has been receiving glowing praise, even from APC stalwarts like Governor Akpabio, Vice President called him Mr. Projects. What are you bringing to the table that will be an improvement on Governor Wike? I think at the end of the day, there are certain things that you need to be clear about. One is a very, very clear determination to succeed. Secondly, it's bringing an expertise, knowing that you have all the abilities internationally and locally to create jobs, jobs that are absolutely needed. There's a development and an infrastructure breakdown across River State, which is human capital infrastructure. We need to be able to address that. So we're addressing peace uh, against insecurity in River State. There has it's just been too much violence and we're ensuring that that does not happen. We're bringing in jobs into uh, the country, which is something that we've always done. I've worked with youths all across. I have created jobs and know how to create jobs. We need to bring in into the uh, River State economy investments. Investments have been fleeing out of the country. And one of the things that they need across the table is somebody who understands business, understands investment, knows exactly how to speak to business people, and bring that investment into the state. We don't have investments in River State. Rather, things are moving out. We now have to bring it in. All right, Mr. Cole, um, we know that you've been doing ward to ward rounds, actually trying to get to meet your people and get closer to your people. Now, with this particular judgment, would you be suspending your campaign or would you be going on or would you be waiting to get a judgment before you continue your campaign? How will your campaign be like for you moving on from this particular judgment right now? Okay, so we always, we've always uh, obeyed court orders. So one of the things that this particular order went ahead to say was that we should not campaign. And so again, that's, uh, I, we are surprised at that judgment. So we stopped campaigning uh, between yesterday and today while we file an appeal <clears throat> and a stay of injunction. The minute that is done, we go back to campaigning. So I'm not worried about that. I know that we have to obey what we see and we're law-abiding citizens, so we've done that, and then we'll continue campaigning immediately after we lift it. All right, and what will happen if the judgment does it, does it, is not in your favor? I'm, I, don't, I don't see how it would not be in our, in our favor, because when we look at it from the pure fact of law, we know that the underlying uh, criteria under which the initial judgment was given is faulty. And that's what we've been appealing. And we know that they, we trust our judges in Nigeria that when they sit down to take a look at the facts on the table, that they will rule in our favor. And so we're standing on that fact telling all, our, all, all APC candidates uh, in our party that they should be calm, telling our faithfuls who are looking for change that we will be there on the ballot box. There's no change in our, our mind on this. We know we will win this election, and we're just standing on that fact. And it is going to be difficult to sell the APC to the people of River State, isn't it? Uh, considering the fact that your party cannot hold you know, uh, primary congresses, primaries to elect or select a candidate to present to the people. No, on the contrary, we found out that it's actually been very easy 
to sell APC, to sell my candidacy and sell APC in River State. The reason why is that people have been tired of the killings. They've been tired of the joblessness. They've been tired of the poverty. Remember I said I've been going word to word. I have been to certain places that are totally ungovernable. Ungovernable, there is no presence of government. There's not even a police station there. So you see this and when you begin to see this, you know that people are desirous of change. So the first aspect of it is that they know that in politics you would have all of these legal matters that you will go to court and all of that happens. So that's fine. They know that a primary has happened. They saw a flag being handed over. So with everything, there has been propaganda saying that there are no candidates and all of that. But at the same time, we've been moving ahead and moving along, showing people that there's one thing about a court process and there's another, which is the end of that process. We're not at the end of that process. Indeed, we're very far from the end of that process. So. Uh, for the people of APC, for the people of River State and APC in particular, we're selling very well and we know that people are just tired. They want change and they want change that will bring a better life to them. Mr. Cole, you come from the rarefied world of business and have entered into a highly contentious political terrain such that it has actually cost your company, Sahara Energy, cancellation in contracts worth billions of naira, which has been done by incumbent governor Wiki, including the Omogu power station, a smaller power station, road contracts. The, the toll that it's taken on your company is mounting. Do you think your candidacy is worth it? Absolutely, because it's not about, at, at the end of the day, it's not about my company. It's about the people of River State. It's about the poor people who are suffering and all of that, who we have to raise out of poverty. Now, one of the things I did immediately after taking this decision was to resign from Sahara. And it was public. I left completely. I don't have contacts. I hardly speak to them. I don't go in. I take absolutely no decisions. We have a governance process because we know we're an international company. We sit on, at the World Economic Forum, United Nations, and all of that. So we know exactly what to do. And it was very clear that I had to disassociate myself completely, and I did. Now, when you take decisions as has been taken uh, against me in person, it's a personal decision against a company that has pure governance, uh, employs over 4,000 people, and has people from all parties in it. I, I think it was a wrong decision. But the, part, the, the company has to take the decision that they will take today. I don't know what that decision will be. I don't know whether they're going to sue. I don't know whether they're going to walk away from it. But we're two different people. Right now, I am an APC candidate, a politician. I have nothing to do with Sahara. And I'm focused on making my people in River State better for my decision. Your former partners in Sahara would also definitely agree that Governor Wiki's decision was the wrong one, seeing what it has cost them. But reports reach us that they agree that your decision to enter into this terrain was also the wrong one for you, because Sahara was built on a non-partisan platform. And all these blows that have been dealt to the company as an attack to your person is not worth it for them. What do you have to say to that specifically? And I would agree. If I were in their shoes, I would feel exactly the same way. I know that they, would, they were not happy about the decision. Uh, they felt that my decision jeopardized them and that it made, it made life very, very difficult for them because we had built a company 23 years. I was a key part in that building. But I made a decision that was my decision at a particular point in time that said that there was more to life than what, what I had done. I needed to go out and begin to work with people. I'd been doing philanthropy, I'd been leading the Sahara Foundation, but it wasn't enough. There was much more to be done. You cannot be looking at people and seeing the suffering every single day and not make a decision. And so that decision was mine. It was a personal decision. My partners were definitely not happy about it. It ostracized us, moved us apart, and all of that. And we're still suffering the impact of that split. They were not happy. And if I were in their uh, position, I probably would not be happy. But we understand each other. We know that it was a decision that I made. And I think they respect that decision. They're not happy about it, but they respect it. In the event that you're not sworn in as governor come May 29th, will you return to Sahara? And is the climate there in Sahara such that that is actually possible for you? And on a personal note, you were at some point being considered for a ministerial position. Would, looking back now, based on your grassroots campaign experience, as opposed to the more sanitized version of being involved in politics of a political appointment, would you have preferred to have 
stayed on that route instead of embarking on this adventure? No, no, no. I think at the end of the day, uh, timing is everything. And I believe that God's timing is always the best. Uh, the, that whole episode of going uh, for being appointed or nominated as a minister and then pulled back had, its, had a place at the time when that happened. Right now, what I'm seeing is that this is the right time and this is the right decision for now. Let's go back to, to politics, Mr. Tony Eko, if you will. Um, how would you describe the situation really in your party in River States? Because Senator Magnus Abbey has directly and indirectly accused the former governor of the state, which is now the Minister of Transportation, uh, Mr. Rochimi Amechi. You know, he says he just gave a fiat of those who should be in politics and those who should not be. But, I mean, from your own experience, from your own version, what do you think is responsible for this? And how do you describe the situation in your party? I think one of, one of the things that I have seen in, in politics since I went in there is that there would always be a leader. And a leader will have a decision to make. And those who are there may agree, may not agree, may, may choose to stay, may choose to, to move away. But when you have a situation where there's a, a, a total fight against a decision that leaders make, then you have the kind of situation that you have. Senator Magnus has decided uh, that he wanted a different position, and he's taking that different route. And truly, he has a right to do so. He, has a de he made a decision, and he's free to make that decision. But when it comes to the case of bringing an entire party down, uh, for one decision. I don't agree with that. I think that there's always room for negotiation. I think that people need to sit down and look at the good, the common good of everyone. And I think that's what politics is about. It's never about a single decision. It's about the common good of the people. So the question is, who are we serving? Are we serving ourselves or are we serving the people of River State? And I think right now we should be looking at how we best serve the people of River State. All right, a follow-up to her question. Um, Senator Magnus Abe and his camp have actually said that you were snuck in through the back door by the minister, and that's almost all the that's almost the genesis of this particular problem the APC is facing right now. And they see call you an outsider and a man that is actually new to politics, you're a novice in politics, and you don't have what it takes to carry the flag of the APC in River State. I think I think that's uh, that's very mischievous at the end of the day. There's no way that you can do the kind of business that I've done over the years and you will be new to politics. Business and politics, one way or another, work hand in hand. So you are never new to politics. You are involved in politics, albeit from the back and not in the forefront. Now, businessmen have always looked at the end of the day and gone into politics. It's been, it's been there all through life. People do business and then they go into politics. There must be a day when you come into politics. Now, you may do it when you're young, you may do it when you're old. So I think it's very, very mischievous to say that you were snuck in. Uh, Senator Magnus has known me for a long time and he knows that he has seen me around, around him, around them uh, for a long time as well. So uh, you're never snuck in. There's a day when you will come in and the day was made, a decision was made to come in and I came in. So there's nothing we can do about that. That's been done. Your camp has painted quite a macabre picture of the security situation in River State with the spate of gruesome murders. You yourself have experienced, you've witnessed campaign violence during your grassroots campaign. So what do you attribute this sort of violence in River State and what is your role in dousing these tensions? Okay, and that's a very good question. So when I went in, one of the first things that almost everyone said to me was about violence. Indeed, your, your show was one of the places where it was graphically uh, laid out as to how much violence has been in River State. And thinking about it, I decided that rather than go and heat up the policy, I would go with the politics of peace. And that was my message, that we were here to bring peace. And I found out that people desired peace. If, I, if you abuse 
gives me and I abuse you back. Sooner or later, everybody is going to move to slapping each other and then shooting each other and then killing each other. And so I was definitely not going to go down that line. As you know, I'm also a man of God, I'm a pastor, I am not going to be violent. And so we went with a politics of peace message. Now, one of the things that I pointed out very recently is that if you think about this same period between two, uh, in 2015, December, January, there was such a palpable fear. So many people had been killed by this period in time. And we can only attribute it to what we have done by going around and reassuring people that we're not here to kill anyone, we're not here for violence, and that we will not tolerate it in any way. And what we have seen is that there has been a tempo, a drop down, in rhetoric, and we have seen that there has been very little violence in this time. People are moving around, they are not as afraid as they were in 2015. And so I believe that we're actually succeeding. Our message of the politics of peace is succeeding. And that's what River State needs now. I've told them that without peace, they can't get development. And they want development. Without development, they can't get jobs. And they want jobs. Without jobs, they cannot have a better life. And they want a better life. And that's what we've been preaching. You say you're open to dialogue in resolving this issue, but so far it doesn't seem to be working. Uh, if not, you will not be here. Uh, so are you considering um, involving you know, other party leaders in this situation? And uh, perhaps I think my question is, what is the role of party leaders in, in this crisis? I mean, the, the NWC of the party, perhaps even the president. Is the president wading into this problem? And um, there's, there's a British uh, and English word that says it takes two to tango. At the end of the day, both parties have to be willing to reconcile. One thing that I'm certain about, because a lot of people are not, they're shocked when I tell them this. I have been witness and I have spoken and we've been there. Uh, governor Amici, former Governor Amici, uh, has called, sat down with Magnus on this issue in the presence of Oshimole, the party chairman, national chairman. He has sat down with Magnus. Uh, in the presence of former governors, they have sat down with uh, Senator Magnus. I myself have sat down with Sen Senator Magnus. The vice president has sat down with Sen Senator Magnus. Uh, Asiwaju Bola Tinubu has sat down with Sen Senator Magnus. Many of these at our instance, at my instance, I've gone there, I've gone to the vice president, gone to Asiwaju, spoken with the former uh, governor, uh, with uh, Oshimole. So a lot of people have sat down. Now, when you bring a matter onto the table, somebody has to be willing to move. Where you have a situation where one party is absolutely unwilling to move, then you have an issue. And that's where we are. So we will continue putting these matters on the table. The entire party structure has been on the uh, case that can there be a reconciliation. I have said it over and over again that we can reconcile. There's a way around this. Let's sit at the table and let's find a way to agree. All right, Mr. Toyoko, for the greater good, would you be willing to step down for Senator Magnus Abe and maybe even consider taking a deputy governor position for the time being? Maybe or you can, or you can reach a gentleman agreement of maybe he running and probably you running in 2023. Can that be that kind of gentleman agreement between yeah, but, both of you, or can you come? Can, are you willing to take that much of a hit at this point for the interest of the party? You know, if if that option was on the table today, who knows? We can consider it, and we could have taken it. But right now, you cannot substitute parties. Right now, you cannot change anybody. Right now, INEC has gone, has closed any possibility of anyone coming into any pos position. That, what, we're, what you have put on the table is a position that cannot work. The only position today is that uh, the APC National uh, carried out a primaries. The primaries had put me out there. Uh, INEC has submitted my name there, so I am the candidate. Now, the only thing that we can do is sit down with Senator Magnus and come to an agreement as to what will happen post-election. We need to work together for the people of River State, and the people of River State have to come out better. We have an opposition in PDP, which is a strong opposition, and we have to remove that opposition. Once we have removed them, myself and Senator Magnus can sit down and work for the state. The people of the state require all 
hands on deck. I need him to be by my side. I need him to stand with me. I need him to work for the people of the state. He has professed that everything he's doing is for the people of the state. If that is the case, let us sit down together and put the people first. And this is not about him. It's not about me. We don't need it. We need the people of the state to be better. Since it's full steam ahead, barring any further unfavorable court judgments, can you describe how you're going to bring your expertise in the area of power to bear for the benefit of the people of River States, bearing, of course, in mind constitutional restraints? Because power is strictly on the exclusive list, so it's for federal government, is in the federal government's ambit. But what can you do, even in that terrain, to generate power for the people of River State? Uh, the, well, the good thing about, about power is that we also cut our teeth in power. <coughs> Excuse me. And we made a lot of differences, even with all the constraints. We sat down, we worked with distribution, we had the largest distribution network, the largest generation network, so we know what to do. We know where the laws are. So with that coming in, there's, there's, uh, there are ample ways for us to develop power within the state, and we can do it. We have ample ways of also bringing in investors who can work in power and work hand in hand with the federal government in bringing power. The good thing about the power industry is that <clears throat> it's improving every single day. So we know what to do, we know how to bring people People in and I will work very closely with the federal government on that and investors who can come in. You can have mini grids, uh, off, off grid solutions, there's solar solutions, there are different types of solutions of which I know. There are, um, there are development DFIDs who are willing to come into this space and are willing to bring solutions for rural communities or communities that are far flung. And we have seen, I've been to communities that have absolutely no light at all. And we have to bring off-grid solutions there. So there are many ways uh, to solve this problem, and we will find all of them. Um, now that your campaigns have been put on hold, and we, we can also refer to you as an aspirant, as you're currently not a candidate, um, what next for you and the APC in River State? No, well, that's a simple question. So we could just continue the court process. Um, within, the, within this week, the uh, applications will be filed uh, for appeal, uh, and other options, legal options that are open to us will be taken. As soon as that is done, we continue, we come back being candidates and we continue. The, let's remember that the law has not been exhausted. So all that you are seeing now is a temporary halt. It is not an exclusive halt. It's not a final halt. So we are only obeying a very temporary halt right now while we are open to pursue all the options that are available to us legally, including settling out of court if that is an option. So I don't see this as a fait accompli. I don't see it as an end. Today we stopped campaigning because that is the, the uh, latest uh, judgment on the table, but we will appeal that. And the minute you start appealing that, you're back uh, as a candidate and you continue. So let's remember that we're not off the table, we're not off uh, the ballot box, we're not off the campaign trail. All we're doing is a temporary hiatus to just get us back on track and we'll continue. All right, um, Mr. Toyoko, as we, as we look at this, um, looking at it closely, um, have you actually reached out to the, have you actually reached out to the um, Senator Magnus Abe's faction and tried to sit down with them after this particular decision has actually, this particular judgment has actually been reached? No, this judgment was reached just a few days ago, uh, two, days, uh, two days ago on Monday. Yes. So between then and now, we've had to bring our camp into, uh, into play. We have to reach out to our party members to keep them calm and let them know that there's no cause for alarm. Uh, we've had to reach out to the general public also to let them know that there's no cause for alarm, that this is normal in politics. Uh, people challenge decisions. You go to court, you challenge the decision of the court and all of that. So that's the first priority. The next priority after that will be to begin to deal with the opposition, uh, with the uh, divided faction within the party. But one thing that I can tell you that we have done at the same time is also go to the leadership of the party and the different to tell them that we need to resolve this uh, issue. It's not an issue that national leadership can ignore. And so the national leadership is looking at it and they are also working very, very hard to make sure that there is a resolution. So we're open to, we're, we're, we're open to, to all options. 
Mr. Tanya Cole, can you share your final words on the topic of your campaign and your plans for governance of the people of River State? Yes. And so it's a three-pronged uh, campaign. The first aspect of it has to do with peace, which will deal with security and all of that. We need to bring peace back into River State. We're already working on that. We have seen the plan of that. I have met with various factions, various militants, various uh, people who have been disenfranchised and are worried about the security uh, situation in the state. And we're working on a plan for peace. That's number one. The second aspect of it has to do with wealth creation. We need to create wealth in the state. And that means that you have to bring investors. And investors have to have confidence in the rule of law. And so what I'm telling them and the investors is that, you know me. I have been down this line. I know what business is about. Come. You will have rule of law. You will have a friendly business environment. I know what to do there. And so we have investors lining up to do that. The next aspect is that once that development comes and investors are coming in, then they are creating jobs. For the jobs, there are two types of jobs. The jobs that are created by business that comes in and the jobs that are created by individuals because you have given them the opportunity to express themselves. And we're looking at that demography of the youth. How do we do that? Entertainment, IT, uh, the sports, uh, sports and infrastructure. You take that and you bring them into the, that space because you have talented youth sitting down every day. And so we're working with Nollywood. I'm working with the entertainment industry. I'm working with uh, the telecommunications industry to bring these aspects of it and working with sports as well to make sure that we can take a lot of our youths off, off the table. And then you begin to look at women. You see what they can do. Market women, how do we bring things like uh, trader money into, into the state? How do you begin to empower them in little ways that will cause them to do big things? And those are the kind of things that I'm looking at. Thank you very much indeed for your time. It's time now for a short break. When we come back, we will have the spokesman of Afeni Ferry, Mr. Yinka Odumaki, weigh in on the electoral process. Stay with us.